About five years ago, I noticed a tiny little mole on the left side of my face. I didn't think it was particularly interesting, but I went to the dermatologist because when you live in South Florida, that's what you're supposed to do. And at that time, I was told it's nothing. It's cosmetic. Go about your life. So that's what I did. But a few months later, the mole got bigger, and it changed shape, and it became multicolored, and it even bled. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm merely a television host. Here I am interviewing 80s heartthrob Adrian Zemed. Settle down, ladies. Here's a closer look at the mole. Even I knew that a bloody mole was probably a, a bad thing. So I went to a different dermatologist, and it's a good thing I did because he biopsied it. And he called me back to tell me that that nothing little insignificant cosmetic mole was in fact melanoma. Now, I don't know how much you know about melanoma, but it's one of the more aggressive and fatal cancers out there. It can spread to your brain and your liver and your lungs, and it can kill you. So I was appropriately terrified. So I went to a head and neck cancer surgeon, and he operated on me. And he took out the mole, and he took out eight lymph nodes just to make sure the cancer didn't spread. And I went home to recuperate and to spend far too much time on WebMD. And he called me back to let me know that my worst fears were confirmed, that the cancer did spread to three of those eight lymph nodes. And based on that and the size of the mole and some other scientific factors, he diagnosed me with stage three melanoma. Just like that. I went from totally healthy to a small nothing mole to stage three cancer. And that meant a second surgery. And that surgery was 14 and a half hours long. And in that surgery, doctors took out all the lymph nodes from the left side of my neck and the parotid gland from the left side of my face. And then a plastic surgeon came in and cut my stomach open and took a whole bunch of fat and tissue out to put my face and neck back together so maybe I could be on TV again, you know, if I didn't die from the cancer. Well, spoiler alert, I'm alive. <laughs> it's been a wild five years filled with terrifying ups and downs, PET scans and brain MRIs and CAT scans and a two-year clinical trial and numerous vials of blood and constant anxiety, but here I am. And physically, I am more or less the same guy, except for one really, really annoying side effect. I now sweat every single time I eat. Why is that? Great question. I'm glad you asked. Allow me to try to explain. Now, again, I'm not a doctor, nor am I an artist, but as best as I understand it, when all of you take a bite of food, it stimulates your brain, and then your brain stimulates the nerves in your face, and they release some chemical, and that chemical activates your parotid glands, and you salivate under your skin like the normal healthy people that you are. Good for you. <laughs> I do that on the right side of my face. However, on the left side of my face, I don't have a parotid gland, so instead, I sweat on top of my skin for all the world to see, sometimes just from thinking about food. And this is called Fry's syndrome, which is ironic because fries are one of the foods that make me sweat the most. <laughs> it's not just fries, it's also this, and it's this, and unfortunately for me, it's this. And every time I take a bite of any of these things, my face looks like this, and I end up using a ton of these. So a few years ago, I'm at a gala for the American Cancer Society, and I'm just trying to enjoy a night out trying not to think about cancer. And as I'm talking to somebody, I bite into one of those delicious cocktail meatballs. And right as I do that, I see a lady I know approaching to say hi. And before I can wipe the sweat off the left side of my face, she leans in and gives me such a nice, warm, welcoming kiss. Now, I don't know if you've ever kissed a soggy face. I have not. But I can tell you based on her reaction, it's not good. It sent her straight to the bathroom, it sent me straight to the bar, and subsequently straight to the therapist's couch. But this became a real problem for me and caused me a ton of anxiety and self-consciousness and embarrassment. It got so bad for me that I did whatever I could to try to mitigate it. I put antiperspirant on my face. 
but it just smelled weird and felt funny, like I had antiperspirant on my face. I actually created a sweat food chart, like a sweat sommelier, so I could figure out what I could eat in public around people. But you can only order crackers and water so many times. The topic of Botox even came up, but I didn't go down that road. And then ultimately what happened was, I just stopped going out. I just stopped being social. I stopped spending time with friends and time with colleagues because I was embarrassed and self-conscious and angry and probably worst of all, filled with self-loathing like it was somehow my fault. And then a wonderful thing happened. I got to throw out the first pitch at a Marlins game on Melanoma Awareness Night. And it was a great night for two reasons. One, my first pitch reached home plate on a fly, which is always great, always great. You don't want to bounce it. And also because I met TJ Sharp. TJ is a stage four melanoma survivor, and his cancer did spread to his lungs and his liver and his spleen and his abdomen. And he was told he had months, maybe a year or two to live. And that was several years ago. And now my man TJ is perfectly healthy. And not only that, he is so tough that he's an endurance athlete who finished a tough mutter race while wearing a colostomy bag. Wow. Right? If he could do that, I could eat a slice of pizza in public. So that's what I resolved to do, to get my life back. Because it occurred to me I could be one of two people. I could be the guy who was scared all the time and angry all the time and self-conscious all the time about this cancer, or I could be the guy who embraced life and who was grateful that on that day, at that moment, I was healthy. So that was the guy that I strived to be, and I started going out again, and I started having meals with friends, and I became less self-conscious of this and more proud of it, and I started to view this sweaty face as a battle scar, as a reminder of what I had been through and the fact that I was still here standing tall. And you know what? If anybody noticed it, which they did, and asked me about it, which they did, I was fine with it. Because most of all, it became a teaching point, an opportunity for me to share my story and to tell everyone that if you don't wear sunscreen and if you don't go to the dermatologist, then you know what? A sweaty face is going to be the least of your worries. So when you think about it like that, you know, maybe it's not that big of a deal. And this is what I'm challenging all of you here today to do, to reframe how you feel about whatever it is that makes you self-conscious, that makes you feel less than, because I promise you, in the grand scheme of things, it is not as big of a deal as you think it is. And when you compare it to the fact that you're alive, it takes on a whole different, less important meaning. Whatever it is that you're insecure about, maybe for whatever reason you couldn't graduate college, well, you know what? Neither did Bill Gates. Things worked out pretty well for him. In fact, so well for him, now goes back and speaks at colleges all the time. Maybe for you it's a financial situation and you grew up in poverty or you're not proud of the money you have now. Well, Oprah Winfrey came from nothing and she has built such an empire that she is able to give back money, not just people in her audience who get cars, but give money to people who really need it. Or maybe for you, you've got a scar on your face and you feel embarrassed about that. Well, let me tell you the story of a guy named Scarface. <laughs> a guy so prolific, they made a whole movie about him and all of his vast accomplishments. Okay. Now that I think about it, maybe not the greatest example. He did murder a whole lot of people, but still an entrepreneur and a hustler. So you got to give him that. Whatever it is that you have, it is your battle scar, and it's part of what makes you you. And if you want to, it's an opportunity for you to educate and motivate and inspire people, and that is really powerful. You know the expression, don't sweat the small stuff? I think, by and large, it's a great expression. If you get a flat tire, if you spill coffee on your shirt, if your favorite football team loses, who cares? And as a New York Jets fan, I am well-versed in that topic. <laughs> But for the stuff that we're talking about today, the insecurities, the anxieties, I want you to sweat that small stuff. I want you to sweat it out of your body and into the universe and use it as a way to help people. And I promise you, I promise you, 
When you do that, your insecurities will go away and they will be replaced by purpose and that is an amazing, amazing thing. For the rest of my life, I am going to be an advocate in the fight against melanoma. And for me to do that, I have to own my full story and I have to sweat my small stuff, which just happens to be sweat. Sweat your small stuff and you'll come off smelling like a rose. And last thing, if you ever see me out in public, maybe having a meal, <laughs> come on over and say hi. I promise I won't bite. I don't have enough napkins for that. Thank you.